From Buffalo Wild Wings on 19th Avenue in Fargo, welcome to Bench Warmers. Today's featured guests are North Dakota State Head Men's Basketball Coach, Dave Richman. Sports Director at WDAY-TV, Dom Izzo. Weekend Sports Anchor at WDAY-TV, Jody Norstead. And our host, Midco Sports Network's Tom Neiman. Hello, welcome to Bench Warmers. We're at Buffalo Wild Wings in Fargo, North Dakota. The Fargo Dome just across the street here, and great to have these guys with us. We will get into football mode here. These two guys at the end, Jody and Dom, just back from uh, North Dakota State football practice. We'll get into that here in a little bit, but we've got men's basketball coach David Richmond, and we love talking to him about hoops. And David, just catch us up on what's going on with the men's basketball program this time of year, right now, what's going on? We're about ready to finish up our eight week summer school session, which is uh, good. Our guys need to get home for a couple weeks, take a little bit of break. I think the biggest thing that's going on right now, Tom, and the most exciting piece is the shacks really coming yeah. together. Last week, our staff was able to slide over there and get into our offices. Strength and conditioning, athletic training has, has kind of um, come into fruition here in the last couple days and into this week, and it's really exciting. It, it's been it's been a long time coming, and it's been finished extremely well. The Shack, the Sanford Health Athletic Complex, the new home of Bison basketball. You've been, you've been telling the story for the last oh. couple of years about <laughs> being so spread out, and now everything's back together. Ben Woodside was going at us on Twitter. You know, we, we, he, he was with us in 09. Let's do the math. Five years before that, he came here, uh, and we were selling it to him in a recruiting pitch there. So uh, we didn't lie. It, it came it's just coming. not not during his tenure. <laughs> Uh, but we're excited and everybody wants to talk about the recruiting piece and certainly that's going to get us into some conversations but i'm very excited for our current guys to have a place to call home yeah. to, to come up and visit with us in the offices to have the academic piece right under really eliminating a lot of excuses and it's a, it's a big time place and a lot of a lot of thanks goes to a lot of people a lot of donors stepped up a lot of people a lot of hard work behind the scenes and we're very appreciative of it all right you guys chime in on this too but you, you lost chris Cading, corey brown a couple of very good seniors but Really, six of your top eight guys, I think, when I look at it, are coming back. And uh, what, what's what's coming up for men's basketball? Well, obviously, you look at two guys like Corey Brown and Chris Kading, and the number one thing we're getting judged at is winning games. And those two did that to a lot. lot. Uh, a lot. Uh, I think we've had four straight 20-win seasons, two NCAA tournaments in their in their tenure here, and um, so we're, we're certainly going to miss them. But I, I think what you've seen with uh, with our program and our culture is going the high school route and, and um, developing kids and then kind of the next man up and, and we're excited about some of those possibilities. Uh, it, it's a little unnerving because some of them, like I know uh, Dangu is the name that everybody wants to talk to. Well, Dang hasn't stepped on the floor, hasn't played a minute yet. So we'll see if that uh, progression holds true, but we're, we're really excited about our group. I think a lot of teams and programs are excited in, in early August. Uh, but if we can keep getting better every day, I think we've got a chance to, to be where we want to be in March. All right. I think the excitement, Tom, about, and Dave mentioned it, about Dengu is through the roof, obviously, yeah. from being from Sioux Falls. Mm -hmm. uh, Kai Cabellas had a tremendous, I thought, freshman year. His season, you know, normally Dave will test better than I can about freshmen is normally they hit the 20-game the wall and go this way. I thought he got better as the season went along last season. And I look at, at those two guys immediately have a – really good shot to be really good I think for, for NDSU. Their schedule and Dave will attest to it, they're going to play everybody again with Arkansas. I, Arkansas State for the first game at the new building, people don't realize how good of a team that is out of the Sun Belt to come. You don't get games like that ever to well, come to Fargo. And here's the other thing with that Dom, it's a brand new staff. Right. And the guy's coming from Baylor where they played zone. Yeah. Uh, is he going to stick with zone? <laughs> Are they going to play man? It, it's a complete nightmare from a prep situation. I'm going to dump that all on Jaden Olson and he can handle that. <laughs> Uh, but, but you know, they, they've gone the transfer route a little bit. There's so many unknowns, yeah. but I appreciate you bringing that up. You know, that, that's a, that's a, for us to have a home game to open up the place is, is special yeah. on November 11th. And let's face it, this team dealt with a little bit of adversity yeah. last year. Paul Miller had to sit out a game. Carlin uh, left the team, yeah. came back. I think they matured down the stretch, and that showed in the, in the postseason, in the playoffs, in the Summer League tournament. So I think that that needs to carry over, I think, for Dave's club, too. That maturity level and, and working in those new young guys, that is going to be interesting to say. And like Dom said, Kai Cabellas, yeah, uh, fantastic to watch him grow in his freshman season and to be able to see what he's going to do going forward is going to be fun to watch too. USD, I think, is on the upswing. We know how good the Jacks are. Yeah. The league's not going anywhere. I think Oral Roberts will reload that. The Summit is consistently proven now, and everyone's seen it up close in Sioux Falls. 
that it's just going to get better and better. And the rise of all new facilities. Now, NDSU and USD have them. I think Western Illinois might be the lone outlier that hasn't done And they're renovating a little bit to lovely Western Hall. But uh, everyone's risen the game in facilities. Recruiting's here. It's just good mid-major yeah. basketball. And it's just fun to watch on a now it'll be a Wednesday or a Thursday night in January and February to watch these teams go at it. All right, and, and Jody touched on it a little bit. This was a really interesting story from the Summer League Tournament this past yep. season. With, with Paul Miller, you made a decision. This was the semifinals of the Summit League Tournament. I don't know what the violation was, doesn't matter now, but you sat him for one game, and that, I, I respected you a lot for doing that. At that time, you could have let that go and let him play in that mm -hmm. game, but mm -hmm. you got to do things like that to keep your program where you want it to be, don't you? We, we have a saying within our program, don't compromise character and integrity for success. Your character, your, your character and integrity will take care of your success. And when we sit down with families and look moms and dads in the eyes, we talk about at the very end of the day, the orange ball is going to stop bouncing. We want to make them better husbands, fathers, employees, employers. And, and it was a situation, um, again, that it won't be discussed any further here, but that had been escalating a little bit. And, and I think it was good for all of us. Most importantly, I think, and like Jody said, I hope it was good for Paul. Yeah. We, our first meeting this summer was a, a, about, let's eliminate distractions. Let's eliminate our drama that we had through this year because I think we have the pieces. Everybody, I think, uh, like Don was talking about, I think USD is on the rise. IUPUI has been sitting out mm -hmm. some transfers. Fort Wayne's had a ton of success lately. But if you look at it, we have the most knowns from top to bottom as far as six, yeah, six yeah. guys back and uh, SDSU loses, um, you loses a lot. So if we can eliminate some of those things, I think we get better by just eliminating some drama and distractions. And uh, it's a great learning tool and a great learning uh, experience for all of us. And, and I think it, it helped from the coach was validated. We were able to win too. I'll make you won no the mistake. game by one point. <laughs> and, and I got a out. tremendous yeah. hug from Paul afterwards. So um, hopefully we all learned a little bit from it. All right, really looking forward to uh, November and getting into the Summer League basketball season with Dave and the Bison men. All right, well, when we come back, I'm going to talk some football. Uh, these guys, Jody just back from Minnesota Vikings camp. Dom was in Philadelphia this year with Carson Wentz, and we'll talk about those guys. But next, going to talk about Bison football, just back from the first practice, and we'll do that next. Benchwarmers on Midco Sports Network is presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. Welcome back to Bench Warmers. Buffalo Wild Wings here in Fargo, North Dakota, home of the Bison, the five-time FCS football champions. Uh, Jody and Dom just back from the first practice. We're sitting here on a Monday. And uh, any, what are the vibes, guys? Any different vibes here now? Carson Wentz gone, but what, what's the vibe? I think that's a in? big one, yeah. Tom, is that the specter of number 11 isn't there anymore, uh, even though Easton Stick played eight games last season and won them all. And I, he got better as the season went along last year. It's an interesting dynamic now because that dominated the talk. Even first day of fall camp, he had just got back from the Nike 11, the Elite 11 camp uh, out in Oregon. And now that that's gone, I think this team's got so overshadowed during uh, spring ball because it was during the NFL yep. draft process. It got swallowed up. There was We were trying to pay attention to the 2016 Bison, but all this was going on with Carson, that now it's time to look at this team and there's so much back defensively, which we, we did this show last year, and I sat here and wondered, how are they going to be on defense? And they were they got better as the season went, and they bring all their guys outside of their secondary back. It's scary. I, I don't see a drop-off this year. I don't. The schedule is really hard. This is the best schedule they've played since the move up to Division I. Eastern Washington is the ultimate payback game, even though none of the guys on this team were mm -hmm. there in 2010. And obviously the specter of Iowa is out there for the Big Ten. Uh, going to the Rose Bowl last year, which I think everybody has circled, even though it's a game that doesn't count, you know, overall down the road. Touching on Easton, I think it, one of the things that he said today was last year getting those those eight games in and playing those eight games, he really learned a little bit about how to practice, and we'll take that yeah. into this season. Okay, the speed is going to be different once it gets to game time. I, I've, I've felt that those last eight games, and I asked him about – the coach is talking to you about less running because you don't want to injure your quarterback. And, and we saw Easton, I think he was the third leading rusher on the team last year. You can't have your quarterback running around like that. But he said, no, if it's going to be a game-by-game -game basis. If that's what they need me to do, that's what they need me to do. And that's something that I think you really need to concentrate on because how quickly can things change when you lose a quarterback? Obviously, it didn't change <laughs> last year. So last year's right. maybe the anomaly of it all. 
but it's still something to look at. Scary, though, because there's three or four really good running backs there. There's yeah. a couple of wide receivers coming back. Defensively, you talked about Nick DeLuca is going to be one of the, maybe the best linebacker in the country. I think he is already. I who think else, he's the best linebacker Who else defensively? Nate Tangway. Greg, I mean, Menard, yeah, Greg Menard, I think, is one of the best defensive ends in the country, yeah. too. Tangway is saying today, uh, people have been asking me, uh, you're, you're still at camp? What are you doing still here? Because <laughs> he's just a junior, junior, but he's been playing forever. You talked a little bit about the season starts August 27th. It's only three weeks from yep. this Saturday. Charleston Southern here to take on North Dakota State and then Eastern Washington. And then at Iowa, yep. is this going to be the end of playing Big Ten teams? Is that going to really happen eventually? I, it looks like that's what the Big Ten wants. Yeah. And I think they don't want their lesser schools, and I say lesser, from Minnesota, Purdue, Illinois, to face these schools, even though those schools need FCS wins to make bowl games, yeah. Iowa is not in that category. This is by far the best FBS team that NDSU's yeah. played since they moved up to Division What's one. been the run? Four or five wins five. against FBS. Kansas yeah. State, I was going to add, is there a chance to beat Iowa this year? Is, I, there, is that I think there's realistic? always a chance. I don't think, and I think Jody will test this, I know Dave will too, there's no way Iowa is going to overlook NDSU. Yeah. With the leadership that Iowa has, the athletic director is a former Bison yeah. quarterback in Gary Barta. His deputy AD ran this program so well for 13 years in G. Taylor. I don't think there's there's any way that the Hawkeyes are going to look the Bison on September 17th. And what they've done the last four times against yeah, right. F FBS yes. schools. And I was at that, you know, that Kansas State game, and I, I just don't see that. That was a team that was great the year before, yes. lost a lot of their main guys. This Iowa team is is really on the rise good. right now. Yeah. This is going to be a, by far the toughest matchup. But they, but they are worried. I mean, you know oh, they're I, thinking I, about the it's, They it's, are. They got to. And this is the the catch twenty two. Is everyone says, well, they won't overlook them, but it's still it has the connotation. And Dave has probably built this up of North Dakota. They're from North Dakota. There's yeah. an FCS. They can't. Well, they're they can't from Iowa. Possibly. And here's but here's the thing. Point. Their huge game is the week before. They play Iowa State at Kinnick Stadium the week yeah. before. That's the game they can't afford to lose. The ultimate bragging right game is the Iowa State the, for the Cyhawk Trophy. So I don't know. I'm really looking forward to that that matchup just because Iowa's last performance was being embarrassed by Stanford in the Rose Bowl on national television. How are they going to come back and play? against the team that everybody thinks they should beat. All right, that's the third game of the season for the Bison. Illinois State, South Dakota State, Youngstown, yeah. all coming here to uh, take on the Bison at home this year. And at Northern Iowa, Tom, is always the biggie. That's, that's the, the yeah. rivalry game of all rivalry games. The last time the Bison went there, they lost by 20. It's the only time they've been smacked around in this in this run. End of October at Northern Iowa. And, and this football team eats up a huge amount of attention in this town, but you, you love it, don't you? I mean, that's good for your program, too. Isn't it? I, I love it. I mean, we were just talking off air before we got going. I grew up in a football family. My dad was a college football coach, so personally, I love it. You know, Chris and Rhonda Kleiman are good friends with my, my wife, Stephanie, and I, and you want to talk about a uh, recruiting tool? Yeah. You, you bring a kid through tailgating. You bring a kid to the Fargo Dome on a Saturday in, in the fall. It's a big-time atmosphere, and, and, and these guys and you guys you do such a good job. We don't, we don't battle a lot with professional sports for that exposure and those guys they get to they get to see that come together on a on a weekend in the fall and we really feel if we can get you to campus with your family there's a pretty good chance we can yeah. seal the deal all right uh, we're gonna talk some nfl when we come back uh, jody just back from vikes camp gonna be a super bowl season there people um <laughs> and carson wentz in philadelphia we'll talk about that with dom when we come back bench warmers on midco sports network is presented by buffalo wild wings Welcome back to Bench Warmers. Let's talk about professional football, and uh, let's start. Dom Izzo was in Philadelphia uh, just a couple of weeks ago as the start of uh, Eagles training camp there. Carson Wentz from North Dakota State, the number two pick in the NFL draft. Is he number three? Where is he? What's the word on Carson Wentz <laughs> That's a good, as they go into Depends on who you ask. In Philadelphia. As I was driving around Philadelphia, Tom, Sports Talk Radio there is king, and there is no way they would want to see Wentz not play this year. They want him to play now. If they had their choice, Sam Bradford, who dug his own grave by walking out of Eagles, and it's I know it's voluntary minicamp, they want Carson to play. And it's unbelievable the amount of pressure that it's going to be on a preseason game on August 11th when they play Tampa, the first game. And normally, and you guys know, the preseason games, they throw them out. That is going to be a massive game to see if Wentz plays well and Bradford only plays one series. They're going to want to see Carson play. What's the under over is when does he play? They have an early bye, week four. If the Eagles are one and two into the bye week, I wouldn't be surprised he plays then. I, I, 
I said week seven. They play the Vikings that week. It's the middle of October. If they're two and five, you know, two and four, I wouldn't be surprised if they go to them. We had, I really we had, wouldn't be. Poll question coming up on when it will be for Wentz this yeah. year, but uh, they keep talking about his footwork is something that he needs to work on. Is that what you heard when you I, were there? I, a little bit of that. His deep ball is something they, they hammered on during the, the pre-draft process through the NFL Pro Days and, and leading up to that. Honestly, he looks ready to go. The guy, it, he's 6'5", 230 pounds. He's exactly what you want. And he said all the right things. And any of the stigma that I think the Philadelphia fan base is worried about coming from North Dakota, coming from an FCS school, has all been washed away by how he's handled himself since he got to Philadelphia. And I saw that firsthand. Why is that a stigma coming from North Dakota? You can't you can't be a football mind if you come from North Dakota. I, I think that, that? that if you come from Ohio State, Alabama, USC, it would be much easier to stomach yeah. than coming I from mean, I get the FCS, FCS school. thing, but yeah. He's from North Dakota. He's and he has smart the guys from North Dakota. Absolutely. And, and but the thing is, is like Dom said, is he's an unbelievable kid, and he handles it so well. And he just keeps. If, if that's what it is right now, that's fine to him. He just keeps proving you wrong at all yep. at all levels, and that's yep. what he's consistently done. Yep. And I, I mean, I I got to see him play football, but I know him a little bit, and got to know him a little bit. An unbelievable young man, and that's why he's handling things. He's tell so you well. he can play basketball well too. He, he yeah, was a pretty good, good basketball player yeah. in his day too. Todd Brown's it's not good when you scroll on Twitter and all you're seeing is how bad Sam Bradford yeah. was at this day of practice yeah. or this day. You know, it's. Right. It, I don't know. I, I think the fans and the writers all want to see Wentz. Yep. I think that's a slam we'll dunk. see the poll question coming up here in a little bit. Vikes camp, we got a little bit of time here. You were just uh, back yesterday yep. from Minnesota Vikings camp. What's what's the big question there? Is it Teddy? Teddy Bridgewater. If they could <laughs> have the Teddy's, question? Teddy's, I don't know, smart, add Carson's arm. I think Carson yeah. has a stronger <laughs> arm than Teddy. That'd be perfect. But I think that's one of the things everyone keeps harping on. Teddy can't throw the deep ball. Obviously, the addition of rookie receiver Laquan Treadwell could help with some of that. One of those guys that you can just toss it up to in the back of the end zone. And I'll tell you, I, I talked to Treadwell. That guy, both days that I was down there for training camp, he stayed there, not even kidding you, an hour after practice was over, he was still on the field, whether it was catching passes from a jugs machine or signing autographs. He was great with the fans. But that's a guy that's going to be fun to watch just to see him mature. He's been working with Chris Carter a lot. So I think Treadwell is a guy to watch. The offensive line battle is another yeah. one. It's a big talker just because they were so bad last year. Teddy got sacked 45 times. I asked him, like, you know, what does it mean that they came out here and got all these additions for you on the offensive line? He said, well, I need to be better too, you know, avoiding sacks and stuff like that. But uh, the defense, the defense is solid, and that's why I think that they can go a long ways. And that can kind of hide some of the maybe the deficiencies that Teddy still has in his game as he continues to grow. But no question about it, he needs to take a big step forward this year. All right, we'll get to the poll question here in a little bit. When we come back, we got a question from the crowd here at Buffalo Wild Wings about Teddy Bridgewater. We'll have that when we come back. Bench Warmers on Midco Sports Network is presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. Welcome back to Bench Warmers. Time for our winging it question of the day. And for that, let's go to Carla Metz. Carla? Thanks, Tom. I'm here with Kyle Schmidt, who's from Barnesville, Minnesota. You're a big Vikings fan, so he has a Vikings question for the panel. Do you think Teddy Bridgewater is going to step it up this season? All right, Tom, let's see what the panel thinks. All right, Kyle here at Buffalo Wild Wings wants to know, will Teddy Bridgewater step it up is the question. <laughs> will he be improved? from where he was. You're just talking about this, and what do you think? I think you will. I mean, I think it, it's just each year you get more comfortable, and I think Teddy got a lot more comfortable. I think playing indoors is going to help a little bit uh, yeah. and, and just the kind of the change. I mean, it'll take some adjusting to get used to, but it's make or break because they've just put so much yeah. effort into drafting a wide receiver, fixing the offensive line, fixing the offensive line problems. They added two new former head coaches to their offensive coaching staff. It's going to be interesting to see how Teddy handles maybe having a few more voices in his head than just North Turner. All the pieces are around for them to be really, really, really good. It's on the quarterback, as it always is, to yeah. step up and deliver now. And you talk about the long ball. Is it? It's not that he can't throw it. It's just that he's a little he hesitant. Well, he didn't have any time. I don't think. I don't think he had any yeah. time to throw it last year. Yeah. And you mentioned the 45 sacks. That's. It was like a jailhouse break almost. Yeah. You know, every third down of guys getting into the backfield on him. And if he has time, I. 
I think he could do it. I, I think they I go love hand, it in Louisville. They go hand in hand. Yeah. Offensive line plays better. Teddy's going to play better. Yep. And we haven't mentioned Adrian Peterson yeah. Yeah. And, and how much of a luxury it is to always have him. I think Jarek McKinnon, a big guy in the passing game, too. Is Peterson as good, still as good as he's ever been? I don't see any slowing down. No. I, I haven't yet. Yeah, I, I mean, he didn't practice much. He's dealing with a hamstring injury, I think, was, was yeah. what I was told. And um, But it, the guy's going to be fine. He's just... You just walk up to him at training camp, and he's just a massive yeah. individual. He's he's 31. People say that's old, but he's Adrian Peterson. And if Teddy Bridgewater goes down, Sean Hill is ready to be the backup yeah. to take him where they need to go. Keep it All right, when we come back, our poll question concerning Carson Wentz. When should he, when will he play this year for the Philadelphia Eagles? Benchwarmers on Midco Sports Network is presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. Welcome back to Benchwarmers. Our poll question this week, when will Carson Wentz, former North Dakota State quarterback, start his first NFL game as a Philadelphia Eagle? Uh, we had about 130 votes between here at Buffalo Wild Wings and on Twitter. About 60 of those, more than half, almost half, in weeks two to nine. So a lot of people think he's going to get in there at some point. You've seen all these quarterbacks in the last couple of years, Mariota, and these guys come in and play as rookies. Yep. Maybe that's where he should be, but you forget about Chase Daniel is in the mix there too. He's so. a stopgap. He's not the he he, yeah. he would play in if Bradford was hurt and they don't think Carson's ready. I think he's like a one week guy, and then they would turn the keys right. over to in, to Wentz. Interesting that's my that you see Jared Goff is is going to be the Rams right starter away, right, right yep. away, yeah. throwing him out there in L. A. That's pretty crazy, but yeah. I don't know Carson. I think they won 2017. All right, appreciate it, guys, uh, for buys and coverage here in Fargo and online. Uh, check out Jody and Dom at WDAY TV. Uh, they get it done up here, and uh, thanks to David Richmond. Have a great season. Appreciate that. We'll see you then. We will see you next week in Sioux Falls for our final bench warmers of the summer. Thanks for watching.